methods like depth-limited search and iterative deepening are particularly useful if we have some knowledge about the problem. Maybe we don't have to go full depth after all. So for example, in the case of the map, uh, if we know that any city can be reached from another city within some limit uh, at most L steps, which where L is less than 36 in the example, so maybe we don't need to go through uh, as deep in the search tree and just limit it to some uh, limit L. Iterative deepening is an extension of depth-limited search that actually combines the benefits of BFS and DFS. So the idea is to iteratively increase the search limit until the depth of the shallowest solution D is reached. So which means that we're going to apply DLS with increasing limits. So DLS, remember, it's a depth-first search at until some limit. So in the case of iterative deepening, we're going to do uh, a first uh, tree until L, and then we're going to extend L, and then we're going to extend L again until we either uh, we either find a solution, right? We stop if a solution is found, or if the algorithm DLS within each of, within, you know, the limit L returns a failure that there is no solution until uh, the limit L. Because most of the nodes are at the bottom of the, of the search tree, it's actually not a big waste to redo the whole thing until you know we either find a solution or we don't find it. So empirically, we, we see that basically it's not a big waste of resources to do that. So let's take an example with the depth limit between 0 and 3. So for limit 0, we are simply exploring the root node. So we get, it's going to be uh, simple. Limit 0 is just a stay at the root. For limit 1, we're going to do a DFS until limit 1. So we're going to start with the node A. We explore first. So we put B and C in the fringe. We explore B first and then C. And then after, after that, every node in the tree is explored. For limit 2, we're going to go deeper until the limit 2. So we're going to start over. Uh, from node A, we, we are going to add B and C to the fringe. Then we explore, we are doing a DFS. We're going to explore B. From B, we're going to extend um, to get its children. So that's D and E. So we're going to have now in the fringe D, E, and C. Then we are going to explore D, then E. So this subtree is explored. We turn to C. So remember, it's again a DFS. So that's C. We're going to explore all the elements of C, which are F and G, that these two are going in the fringe. So we explore first F and then first G. And after that, we have explored all, by depth first search, all the tree until the limit 2. So for limit equal 3, we're going to start the process over again. So we start with the root node, A. Uh, we put the children in the, uh, in the fringe. Then we put, we go uh, deep into the hierarchy. So I'm going to explore. Uh, I will just do it here. So we're going to explore um, this first path, then this second path, and this third path, etc. Okay. So I'm going to do that, and uh, this is actually uh, a DFS up till uh, limit equal three. But we started actually over, so we're going to do the whole tree uh, again. That was for iterative deepening. Uh, you will get to, you know to play with the, this uh, met method in your uh, programming assignment. You might have noticed that the arcs on the search graph may have some weights or costs. For example, it may be the distance between two cities. And so far, the search algorithm we have, algorithms we have been using do not leverage this information. So how can we leverage this information to help the search to find the optimal solution? So remember, BFS will find the shallowest uh, sh solution, which is the shortest path, which can be costly. What we want is the cheapest solution, not the shallowest solution. So the idea then is to modify BFS to prioritize by cost rather than by prioritizing by depth, which means we are going to expand the node n with the lowest path costs, which we call g of n, rather than expanding it by the depth uh, of the node. The approach is then uh, to explore uh, by increasing cost rather than by increasing depth, such as done by BFS. This method is called uniform cost search. The uniform cost search algorithm is very similar to BFS in the sense that we're going to explore uh, layer by layer, but in this case, we're going to use uh, layers for um, uh, uniform cost search will be determined by uh, the cost g of n. So remember, g of n is the cost to go from, uh, the let's say, the root of the search until the node n. So this is going to be the cost g of n. So this is how much we need to spend in terms of driving or other kinds of cost uh, to each n. So the, the search will now be driven by uh, this function, f of n, which is only g of n. So we use f of n to stay general. And the main reason is that the function f of n, later on we see it for a star, is slightly different. There will be some other parameters uh, that we take into consideration. Uh, 
All right, so remember BFS uses um, a, a, a queue, which is simply uh, an, a, a list in which we put the elements and we pick them uh, first in, first out. Uh, in the case of UCS, we use a heap, which is a priority queue, which means that we're going to pick them out of, to, to pick the elements or the nodes from the fringe by prioritizing according to the function g of n. So in this case, it's the, the, the main difference between UCS and BFS. All right, so we can create this heap, and this heap will include all the elements in the fringe or the frontier. And whenever we need to pick an element, we pick the element with the minimum cost. The other difference is that we're going to also make sure to handle, uh, whenever we add the elements in the frontier, we do the same thing as for BFS. But then, uh, if the neighbor is already in the frontier and we found the shortest path, then we're going to decrease the key. In other words, if you s suppose we have um, a node to which we are going to reach it in, uh, in uh, some cost, Let's call it um, uh, C, so, and this cost is actually uh, going with this node in the, um, uh, in the fringe. And if we found the shortest path, let's say this one, then we're going to make sure to decrease the cost because we found the shortest path to end then the previous cost. So other than that, the algorithm is very similar. Again, we are going to search by uh, cost, not by depth. So there will be layers. Uh, we are going to explore that search tree layer by layer, but these layers will be somehow jagged because we are it, they will be driven by the cost, uh, by an increasing cost in the search. To fix the ideas, suppose we want to go from the city of Chicago to the city of uh, Salt St. Mary, right? Um, so if we do a BFS, we are going to find this two-step uh, solution, which goes from Chicago to Duluth, from Duluth to Salt St. Mary. And the, the cost of this um, uh, solution is 157 plus 110, right? Uh, so it's going to be, uh, we need to spend 267 kilometers to uh, get from Chicago to Salt St. Mary. If we use a BFS modified by cost, which is a uniform cost search, we're going to rather pick this path here, which is Chicago, Pittsburgh, Toronto, and Salt St. Mary. This is a path of size 3, which will not be picked by BFS, but UCS will pick it, because uh, the distance or the cost for this path will be 81 plus 80 plus 90, which will make a solution of uh, 251, which is uh, cheaper than 267. So BF UCS will pick uh, this second path here rather than the other path. 